More details on what was said in that particular briefing and uh, what the KPC said in its defense will be coming um, to you in our subsequent bulletins here on KTN News. Now, as Kenya marks 20 years of uh, fighting HIV and AIDS, the Ministry of Health has today launched the third HIV population-based HIV survey, dubbed Kenya Population-Based HIV Impact Assessment. Now, the survey that targets uh, selected households comes after several years of scale up HIV prevention, um, treatment, and care. Kenfia will look at the state of the HIV epidemic in Kenya and the impact of efforts towards the epidemic control. This survey is unique because it will look at county by county status, unlike the previous surveys that were region based. It will also be the first time that the country will look at STIs, hepatitis B prevalence, as well as the nutrition status in children and pregnant mothers. This this will be the first time that population-based information about prevention, care and treatment of HIV in infants and children will be collected on a national scale. Participants will get free HIV testing and counseling in the privacy of their own homes. The survey is funded by the United States President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief through the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Yeah, with support from development partners, has invested heavily in the HIV and AIDS response. These investments have resulted in significant achievements, key among them being the placement of antiretroviral therapy for over 1.1 million people living with HIV and AIDS. Ladies and gentlemen, while we celebrate, while we celebrate the great achievements made so far, we are aware that more needs to be done in order for Kenya to be HIV free by the year 2030. You will note that up to 53% of HIV infected persons are unaware of the HIV infection status. Further, while over 1.1 million people living with HIV and AIDS on are on treatment, this represents only 73% of the estimated need, and viral suppression is currently estimated at 83%. Taken together, these findings mean that Kenya is yet to attain the globally endorsed 1990-90 target, which aims to have 90% of all people living with HIV aware of their status 90% of all people with diagnosed HIV on treatment and 90% of people on treatment attaining viral suppression by 2020. All right, let's now take a look at the numbers, the statistics as far as HIV is concerned in the country, the current situation or the current status of HIV in Kenya. So Kenya has the largest, uh, has the fourth largest number of uh, HIV population in the world after South Africa, Nigeria and India. 1.5 million people living are living currently with HIV in Kenya. Um, and this is uh, according to the latest data from 2015, HIV prevalence rate of 5.9 percent um, in adults from 15 to 49 years old. So the prevalence late rate rather uh, for HIV in adults is at uh, um, 5.9 percent currently. HIV and AIDS remains a leading cause of adult morbidity and mortality in Kenya. Hence perhaps the reason why this particular survey is being launched at this point in time. Uh, 35,800 deaths are caused by AIDS each year, and that is annually, of course, and uh, 106,000 new infections are witnessed every year, according to the statistics that we have on uh, the current status of HIV in the country. So let's take a look at this survey and uh, some of the things that we expect to see in this Kenfia survey. Um, uh, Dr. Terry will be telling me whether that's how I need to say it. So it will be voluntary participation for those who will be involved in this particular survey. It targets 20,000 households nationally. 
Uh, this particular survey that was launched today, um, uh, about 35,000 people aged uh, between 0 and 64 years will be sampled in this survey that was launched today. HIV counselling and testing at, will be done at home and uh, people will be getting, those who will be surveyed will be getting results um, there and then. Viral load testing for those who test positive will also be done in this particular survey and referral forms for healthcare facility choice as uh, well as this survey will be taking six months but let's now take a look at uh, just get into the conversation on what really this means for Kenya as far as the prevalence and uh, some of the things that are being included in uh, this year's uh, uh, survey a lot of new things have been introduced to how surveys are being done in the country as far as HIV is concerned we have the professional in studio to just take us through what we will be seeing in over 20,000 households that will be involved in the country I'm joined in studio by Dr. Peter Cherutich he's the principal investigator as well as the head of directorate of preventive health. Thank you very much for making time for us here on KTN News Desk. No, thank you for inviting me uh, yes. to talk about Kenfia. Definitely. I mean, let's just start with the launch and what are the different things we will be seeing in this survey this time around? Yeah, thank you very much. So today we had the launch of uh, the Kenfia, but the launch is sort of just a culmination mm -hmm. of uh, two years of preparatory work yeah. that went into it, uh, planning for it ensuring that we um, are asking the right questions. Um, and so what we are launching today is a survey where basically our field teams will go from house to house. Mm -hmm. Now, it will not be every single house in this country. Uh, we have sampled. There's a particular process that we've taken mm -hmm. to make sure that we sample so that every Kenyan has an equal chance of uh, being interviewed and also being talked to about this survey. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to those households, we'll knock in those households and um, um, you know, talk to uh, Kenyans and ask them a few questions uh, related to HIV. And then we'll also be able to take uh, blood samples uh, for testing for HIV, hepatitis and syphilis, uh, basically three diseases. Mm -hmm. And um, those in a nutshell will tell us three things. Mm -hmm. Uh, at least for HIV. One, yeah. it will tell us what, what is the total number of people currently living with HIV in this country. Uh, and you know that information will mm -hmm. be available for every county. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, it will uh, actually tell us uh, the number of new infections that are occurring in each of, of, the, of the counties. And that's very important to know because we need to know mm -hmm. where are the new infections coming mm -hmm. from. And then um, thirdly, uh, and amongst, of course, many others, is yeah. that it will tell us amongst those people who are HIV infected mm -hmm. and are on treatment, what proportion of them have been able to control their virus mm -hmm. below what we call undetectable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why is this important at this point in time? Oh, yes, it, it's important because we've been in the business of uh, uh, responding to HIV epidemic for many years. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had some successes. Uh, but we haven't really reached where we want to reach. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and as a country and also as a global community, we have an aspiration that by 2030, mm -hmm. we would have eliminated HIV. Mm -hmm. So for one, this is, um, it is sort of a, a measurement of mm -hmm. the progress we've made towards that elimination process. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's sort, of, sort of a review, mm -hmm. tell us how far are we towards mm -hmm. our aspiration. Mm -hmm. But then secondly, um, it's also going to be important, particularly for county governments, because those county governments need the data to be able to plan for the yes. health services for themselves. So mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's going to be a very, very important service. Yes, I was, I, was, I was going to ask, why yes. are we taking it to the county this time round? Yes. And what will it mean for the county governments this time? Uh, yeah, right, right. I mean, we are in a diff the last time we did this uh, service was in 2012. That was before devolution. Mm -hmm. Now we have devolution and, uh, you know, health is devolved, it is a devolved function. Mm -hmm. And so it is the right of county governments to have data on their HIV mm -hmm. epidemic so that they can tailor their services. Um, as national government, our role is policy and mm -hmm. capacity building mm -hmm. and, you know, technical assistance. But then when we get to know that, let's say, in this particular place, in this particular county, mm -hmm. there are 150 
uh, new HIV infections. Mm -hmm. Then the county now will say, okay, we'll take that responsibility yeah. to make sure that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is really for their own planning mm -hmm. and for their projections into the future. So what will be expected of uh, Kenyans out there as you take on this particular survey? Right. Uh, first, I think, um, and you, let me just appreciate also mm -hmm. the, the media for, for the support and helping us to communicate our messages uh, around Kenfia. Mm -hmm. um, what we are expecting Kenyans is we are asking that, of course, they allow our field teams to, um, to talk to them. Mm -hmm. As we speak now, we've engaged uh, the majority of the people we are going to talk to. Mm -hmm. We've had a week or two of social mobilization where we go to households and uh, and actually ask them that we'll be coming, actually tell them that we'll be coming yeah. shortly. And these are the things that we mm -hmm. will be able to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually did over Jamuri Day on Mad Madaraka Day, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, on Madaraka Day, I did visit um, a place in, uh, in Nakuru mm -hmm. Uh, one of what we're calling the clusters where we are going to do the survey yeah. and I participated in doing that process of informing the communities mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. they, that will be coming mm -hmm. in due course. So uh, we do hope uh, that we, we will get a good turnout and that um, Kenyans will accept to have this happen. Uh, I just want to emphasize that this is very voluntary. Um, you as a Kenyan, you have yeah. a right mm -hmm. to say that I don't want to be asked mm -hmm. any questions about HIV. You have the right to actually say that you don't want your blood to be mm -hmm. taken. But uh, what still we would like to emphasize is that when we take your blood, we're just not taking your blood and taking it somewhere. Um, we will take the blood, do the measurements, and then avail those results to you. So. Uh, as a Kenyan, you will also benefit mm -hmm. because you will get to know whether you are HIV infected mm -hmm. and we will refer you to HIV care. Mm -hmm. Same thing for hepatitis, same thing for syphilis. Mm -hmm. So it's also very good, beneficial to the individual and the mm -hmm. community as well. Mm -hmm. So just for the sake of our, of our viewers, this particular mm -hmm. survey this time around will also uh, keenly focus on hepatitis as well as uh, STIs. Why? Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you for that question. Now. Uh, we've been doing, we know fairly well in the past about HIV, but we are beginning to um, realize that we may also have an epidemic mm -hmm. that could be sneaking behind HIV, mm -hmm. um, and that is one of hepatitis. Mm -hmm. And um, and we'd like to make sure that at least we nip it in the bud, just in case there is there is a big issue of hepatitis. Mm -hmm. um, one of them, particularly hepatitis C, is something that can be potentially eliminated mm -hmm. because we have drugs, we have everything. And then um, um, th that is it. And you know, the roots of transmission mm -hmm. of hepatitis are basically the same roots of transmission mm -hmm. for HIV. So that's why I'm saying it is very possible that you could have another epidemic mm -hmm. sneaking in below mm -hmm. HIV. Mm -hmm. Same thing for syphilis. As a country, we are committed to eliminate uh, what we call congenital syphilis. Mm -hmm. That syphilis that's transmitted from the mother to child. We are committed to end it by the year 2020. So again, it will provide us with very important information as to how big is our syphilis epidemic. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, uh, for many years we had a program on sexually transmitted infections, mm -hmm. which was very successful and contributed partially to the reduction in the incidence of HIV. But then over time, we, we have not had enough emphasis yes. on STDs. So mm -hmm. we want also to use this opportunity mm -hmm. to relaunch mm -hmm. um, and um, sort of recalibrate mm -hmm. the STD program. Mm -hmm. So this will be more precautionary. Yes, it's right. More precautionary. Right. Yeah, I know that we're expecting yeah. uh, things, but it's always good to be ahead of mm -hmm. the curve. Mm -hmm. So looking at the numbers and uh, the new HIV infections, mm -hmm. is, is it going up, is it going down? Our current status, how are we doing as a country? Uh, thank you. We've, we've done well over time, but we're getting a sense that we are stabilizing, um, which is both a good thing and a bad thing, depending on how you see it. Mm -hmm. From our perspective, we would like to see a downward trajectory that is maintained. Mm -hmm so that we meet our targets for eliminating HIV by 2030. Yeah. Um, now, we seem to be having challenges, particularly amongst the young people, yeah. the adolescents, and particularly young adolescents. Um, and they could be contributing to sort of the reduction in the decline. So we, in this survey, 
we will try and quantify that mm -hmm. and to be able to address that specifically. Mm -hmm. Because we believe if we do that, then we'll continue on a natural trajectory mm -hmm. to eliminating HIV. Um, so we, we are keen to do that, mm -hmm. yes. As we wrap up, and um, I know Kenyans out there will be meeting you and, yeah. and, and expecting you, are we targeting any specific age, age set? Um, what will this? Yes, <laughs> thank you. This is going to be a broad survey. Mm. Of course, we'll have a special emphasis on uh, adolescents mm -hmm. and children. Um, because we also want to understand the emphasis of the epidemic on children. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, most of the survey is amongst adults. Yeah. Uh, we are not trying to target like specific populations, mm -hmm. no. It's going to be a broad-based general mm -hmm. survey, mm -hmm. but that will give us very, very important information. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining us here on KTN News Desk and uh, just helping us understand what this survey will be about. Yes. Dr. Peter Echeritich is the principal investigator in this particular program as well as the head of the uh, Directorate of Preventive Health. Uh, once again, thank you for making time for us here on KTN News Desk. On to some breaking news. Education Cabinet Secretary Ambassador Amina Mohammed has uh, disbanded the board of Moy Girls Nairobi School. Remember, this is a school that has once again come to the limelight for all the wrong reasons after rape allegations emerged, um, leading to tension and uh, eventually closing down of the school for about a week as investigations continue. Just this morning, we were seeing demolitions happening along the perimeter wall of this school as um, the uh, relevant authorities seek to ensure safety when these girls go back to school. So the board has been dissolved by the Education Cabinet Sec Secretary owing to the latest, uh, especially the rape allegations uh, that have occurred or have been uh, witnessed in the school leading to the breaking or leading to the closing down of the school. This came a few months after a fire was witnessed in this very school last year in uh, 2017, specifically the month of September, where eight girls died in a dormitory fire so this is a school that is not new to controversy like what it is what is being witnessed now we will be giving you more details of what will be the way forward after the dissolving of this particular school and of course what we know now is ambassador Mina Mohammed has uh, dissolved the board um, of uh, Moy Girls High School, Nairobi, a school that is not new to controversy. Rape allegations surfaced just the other day, um, consequently leading to the closing down of the school for about a week and investigations are currently ongoing um, onto the rape allegations. Uh, we just saw yesterday demonstrations by alumni or old girls of the school who consistently have been calling for justice uh, and uh, security for the girls who are in this particular school. Months earlier, a fire broke out in the school in a particular dormitory. Investigations yet to be complete that saw eight girls die. So this is the latest development as far as Moy Girls High School, Nairobi, is concerned. This particular board has been uh, dissolved. We will be seeing what will be the way forward. And of course, here on KTN News, we will be covering all angles and all the little details we will be getting from relevant authorities on the same. Now, Bomet Governor Dr. Joyce Laboso has decried rising alcoholism and gambling in her county, Bomet. Let's just take a look at what, some of the cons what are some of the concerns she has. This one of alcoholism is a very serious problem. We lose our jobs, we lose serious opportunities. Well, all right, I want us to take a quick break. Of course, so we continue to follow up on the story of Moy Girls High School Nairobi Education Cabinet Secretary Ambassador Amina Mohammed has dissolved the board of uh, Moy Girls High School Nairobi. Investigations are currently ongoing onto the rape allegations uh, that emerged in this particular school just a few days ago, and uh, members of parliament have also decried what is happening in this school. What you are seeing on your screen are pictures from uh, about two or three 
days ago when the rape claims emerged at the Moy Girls High School in Nairobi, specifically in Kibra. And uh, we have seen demonstrations uh, owing to the revelations uh, that were uh, or that emerged from that particular institution. So the dissolving of the board of this particular school happened just a few minutes ago um, via the Education Cabinet Secretary Ambassador Amina Mohammed. Just today, we've also seen demolitions of the perimeter wall of the Moy Girls High School, Nairobi. Uh, relevant authorities saying that that had become the um, uh, makeshift uh, uh, kiosks along that per perimeter wall had become a den of criminals. Of course, suspecting that the men who are said to have um, uh, gained access into the school and uh, uh, defiled the children or raped the girls there allegedly uh, came from those kiosks hence the demolition to just ensure safety and security for the girls when they go back to school in a week's time remember the school was closed for a week as investigations continue uh, tension was high uh, between the students and the administration that is largely being accused of uh, trying to cover up on these rape allegations from the students uh, so it had been this Widely seen as a cover up, and according to what many of the students who have been interviewed had said, and of course, investigations are still are still ongoing on the same. Let's take that break. We still have a lot more lander for you here on KTN News Desk. Don't go too far.